Okay. In our video series on step-by-step -step treatment of stroke and emergency medicine, in this video, we'll be talking about transient ischemic attack, also called as TIA. We'll discuss it. What is transient ischemic attack? What is the presentation of transient ischemic attack? And what are the causes of TIA? We'll discuss it. How do you treat transient ischemic attack in emergency department? First of all, what is transient ischemic attack? American Stroke Association and American Heart Association defines transient ischemic attack as a transient episode of neurological dysfunction caused by focal brain, spinal cord, or retinal ischemia without acute infarction. It means that the patient presented to you in emergency department with a neurological complaint and when you did CT and MRI, there was no finding in it and after some time, patient completely recovered from that neurological complaint. Patient was totally fine after some time. It means that transient ischemia to the brain took place. Transient for some time there was ischemia to the brain. Therefore, patient had a complaint, a neurological complaint. And that ischemic attack was resolved within some time. There was no damage. There was no permanent damage to the brain. There was no acute infarction to the brain. And patient recovered from it within some time. So that is called as transient ischemic attack. You will not find any acute infarction on imaging and patient will have a transient episode of neurological dysfunction without any brain injury. The old definition that you would find in many places for transient ischemic attack would be that ischemic usually embolic neurological event with symptoms lasting less than 24 hours and typical symptoms lasting less than one hour. Old definition provided a time limit, a time limit that patient would have develop a neurological event and patient would recover from their neurological event in less than 24 hours. And the typical symptoms of that neurological event would be less than one hour. So the old definition provided some time limits, but in the new definition, these old, these time limits have been removed and there is no time limit for it. The only definition is that there is ischemia to the brain and that ischemia gets reversed and patient is recovered from it. That is called as transient ischemic attack without a permanent brain injury. Coming to the presentation of transient ischemic attack. Transient ischemic attack may last minutes and symptoms often resolve before the patient even presents to the clinician. Before the patient presents to the emergency department, patient had a neurological complaint until the time they reached the hospital, their neurological complaint has resolved. There was a transient ischemia to the brain, but it did not cause brain injury and it was reversed after some time. That is the classical presentation of transient ischemic attack. Patient might present to you with motor complaint, weakness and paralysis of one side of body. Patient might complain of impaired speech, slurred speech, difficulty understanding others. Patient may present to you with vision problem, amaurosis fugax, amaurosis fugax that they will narrate that uh, doctor, all of a sudden I felt like a curtain was falling down on my eyes and I was unable to see anything. I was totally blind. It occurs due to retinal artery occlusion. And patients can even have crescendo TIAs. What is crescendo TIA? When the patient is having multiple attacks of transient ischemic attack, one after another, that is called as crescendo TIA. An important point to remember is that without intervention, one out of 12 patients of transient ischemic attack will have a stroke within a week of TIA. So intervention is must in these patients. What type of intervention is needed? We'll discuss it in a while. Coming to the causes of transient ischemic attack, what causes transient ischemic attack? The most important cause is atheroembolism. There are atheromas, there are plaque deposition, fat deposition in the carotid arteries and that fats get dislodged and they enter brain and block the arteries within the brain. Cardioembolism, any volvular disease is infective endocarditis in which there is production of thrombi clots in the heart and those clots from the heart can get dislodged and get stuck in the arteries of brain. 
hyperviscosity is an important cause a hyperviscosity can occur in polycythemia in which there are excess red blood cells in the blood and that blood is thick and it gets stuck in the arteries of the brain resulting in transient ischemic attack sickle cell anemia multiple myeloma vasculitis is also a rare cause a rare cause in which it is a non embolic cause and it is seen in sle and cranial arteri arteritis in which there is inflammation of the arteries remember atheroembolism and cardioembolism as the two important cause in which atheroembolism being the most important cause differentials if a patient presents to you with a neurological deficit and all of a sudden that patient get better that patient has totally recovered and there are no findings in the ct and mri what other things can present like this hypoglycemia can present like this patient gets hypoglycemic attack and after you uh, correct that hypoglycemia that patient gets totally better and it can mimic the signs and symptoms of uh, transient ischemic attack migraine with aura can present to you with neurological deficits i have talked about migraine in detail in my video on migraine treatment and management you can check out the link in the description below focal epilepsy hyperventilation hyperventilation can sometimes lead to hypocalcemia and that hypocalcemia can cause spasms in the body that can present that can mimic a neurological deficit so these are all the differentials that you should keep in your mind when the patient with transient ischemic attack presents to you what are the investigations that you need to do now if a patient presents to you with a neurological deficit and all of a sudden he gets better and there are no findings on the ct and mri as i said one out of these patients one out of the 12 patients that present to you in tia will develop a stroke within a week if you don't treat him so what do you need to do what do you need to do is that you have to find out the cause that why did he have a transient ischemic attack you need to do ecg you need to do echo you need to do carotid doppler you need to do ultrasound of the carotids you need to do diffuse weighted mri of the brain in ecg what you are trying to find is that you are trying to see a fib any abnormal rhythm that can lead to production of clots that can lead to production of clots that can get that can get stuck in the brain and cause brain ischemia a fib is a condition in which clots are formed in the heart and they get stuck in the brain you treat the afib i have talked about treatment of afib in detail in my video on atrial fibrillation on echocardiography what you are trying to do is that you are looking for valvular problem you are try, trying to look for is infective endocarditis that can lead to clot formation and ischemia of the brain so now we are looking for the cause we are on hunt for the causes what caused this transient ischemic attack because now it was reversible now it was just a tia next time it will be a stroke then carotid doppler with angiography carotid ultrasound in carotid ultrasound what we are trying to look for is that we are trying to look for atherosclerosis in the carotid artery how much these carotid arteries are blocked we are trying to find that out atherosclerosis and stenosis of carotid artery diffuse weighted mri to look for brain injury usually when the patient with neurological deficits present to emergency department we do ct scan without contrast because it is much more quicker to rule out bleeds and ct scans are usually normal even in the presence of stroke so we do diffuse weighted mri after some time to see the brain damage and if the patient is having transient ischemic attack there will be a normal mri now i'll explain carotid doppler findings in detail as i said that carotid doppler will show atherosclerosis the blockage and stenosis of carotid artery that is causing less blood to flow toward the brain and ischemia now if there is less than 70% stenosis of the carotid artery and the patient has no symptoms you treat it medically you treat it medically by a statins and if the patient is having greater than 80% blockage of the carotid arteries or the patient is having greater than 70% blockage with symptoms that patient must be treated because this patient is having severe blockage of the carotid arteries and that blockage can result in ischemia of the brain resulting in tias that patient will must be treated with either carotid end arterectomy or stenting what is carotid end arterectomy in carotid end arterectomy as i said that there are plaques there are fat deposition atherosclerosis in the carotid artery you cut that artery open you take out the plaques and you stitch it back so that the stenosis is removed 
in stenting what you do is that you get inside the artery you pass a wire inside the artery and you inflate a balloon so that that she knows that blockage is opened up that is called as stenting carotid endarterectomy is a better and preferred procedure and those patients who cannot go under carotid endarterectomy go into stenting now when we are finding the cause these are the major investigations that we have to go for other than that we have to go for cbc esr glucose lipid profiles electrolytes and chest x-ray coming to the treatment of transient ischemic attack treatment of transient ischemic attack will treat it on different fronts first of all we'll control the risk factors we'll control the blood pressure we'll aim the blood pressure to be less than 140 85 if the patient is hypertensive diabetes control and if the patient is smoking stop stop it straight away hyperlipidemia control if the patient is having hyperlipidemia as we ordered lipid profile we must control it with a statin you can start a torvastatin 20 to 80 mg at night orally then we'll give an antiplatelet drug antiplatelet drug like aspirin that will thin the blood out so that blood does not clot at different places it does not clot in the brain we give aspirin 300 mg orally for two weeks and we switch the patient to clopidogrel 75 mg orally and if the patient cannot tolerate aspirin or clopidogrel what we can do is that we can give low dose aspirin give aspirin 75 mg orally with slow release diperidamol so controlling the risk factors antiplatelet drug and the third thing is carotid endarterectomy if the patient is having stenosis 80% stenosis or greater than 70% stenosis with symptoms now we have to go for carotid endarterectomy of the patient and an important point to remember is that these patients are not allowed to drive for one month minimum because they are at a risk of stroke and they can harm themselves and others ABCD score is used in transient ischemic attack to assess the risk of the patient for getting another stroke. That how much risk is there for a patient to get another stroke. So ABCD score uses a few things and gives a score to the patient. And based on the score, you assess the risk. It uses age. Age greater than or equal to 60 gets one point. Blood pressure greater than or equal to 140, 90 gets one point. Clinical features like unilateral weakness gets two points. Speech disturbance without weakness. If the patient had neurological weakness, speech disturbance without weakness, it gets one point. Duration of the symptoms. If the TIA that that patient got symptoms lasted greater than one hour, it gets two points. And if the symptoms of the patient in TIA lasted from 10 to 59 minutes, it gets one point. If the patient is diabetic, it gets one point. If you add up the score and the total score is greater than or equal to four, that patient is at high risk of getting a stroke. And if the total score of the patient is equal to or greater than six, that patient is at a higher risk of getting stroke within two days. There is 8% risk that that patient might get a stroke within two days. And then there is 35% risk that that patient will get a stroke in the next week. So intervention is needed in such patient. ABCD2 score is basically used to assess the risk of the patient that how much that patient is at risk of getting a stroke. In summary, we talked about transient ischemic attack as a transient ischemic episode which has reversed. We discussed that what can be the presentation, motor, speech, vision problem. We found the cause with eco ECG, carotid Doppler and diffuse weighted MRI. In the treatment, we have to control risk factors. We have to give antiplatelet drug like aspirin and switch it to clopidogrel. And we have to do carotid endarterectomy if there is 80% stenosis with greater than 70% stenosis and symptoms and patient does not drive for the one month minimum. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on emergency medicine and step-by-step -step stroke treatment. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Thank you very much.